Welcome to our Sunday worship service of St. Andrews and St. Michael's for this, our third Sunday in the season of Advent. It's my pleasure to introduce our worship leaders to you. My name is Mia Kano. I'm the Assistant Rector at St. Andrews. Ginny, will you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Ginny Snow from St. Andrews. And Joe? I'm Joe Hamilton, also from St. Andrews. And Margaret. Good morning, everyone. I'm the Reverend Margaret Schwartzer from St. Andrews. And the Robbins Coles. I am Sarah Robbins Cole. I'm the Rector of St. Michael's in Holliston. And good morning. I'm Adrian Robbins Cole, the Rector of St. Andrews in Wellesley. Hi, I'm Michael Odierna. And I'm Michelle Odierna, and we go to St. Michael's. We're going to enjoy an Advent wreath lighting blessing from the Benfer family next. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, just and true. To you, to you be praise and glory forever. The prophet John the Baptist was witness to the truth as a burning and shining light. May we, your servants, rejoice in his light and so be witness to him, who is the Lord of our coming kingdom. Jesus, our Savior and King of the ages. Bless be God forever. Amen. I like Christmas because it, everyone's getting together in our family, and it's with full of joy and peace, and it's the day of Jesus Christ's birthday. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 76, On Jordan's Bank, the Baptists Cry. Our worship together begins on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Adrian and Sarah, will you read for us the collect of the day? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir, Stir up, up your power, power O Lord, Lord, and with great might come among us. And because, because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading will be read by Ginny. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our Lord, of our God to comfort all who mourn to provide for those who mourn in Zion to give them a garland instead of ashes the oil of gladness instead of mourning the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit they will be called oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord to display his glory they shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities. 
the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and the offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning will be shared by the Adurna family. And we will now read this now read Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of Negev, of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Joe will read for us our second reading. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sarah will share with us the gospel for this morning. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
We are blessed this morning with a part of the of Handel's Messiah. He shall feed his flock for our anthem.
and Margaret, uh, Reverend Margaret has prepared a beautiful sermon for us. Please pray with me. Lord, bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last week, one of the news stations that I listened to had a weatherman who was trying to prepare his audience for the nor'easter heading our way. He was speaking on Saturday morning, the day of the storm, and he still didn't know much about what we would be facing a few hours later. His newscast was meant to be factual, but he was actually explaining how much we didn't know about the impending storm. He told us there could be anywhere from two inches of snow to 12 or 18 inches of snow. He said there might be lightning or there might not be. And rain, freezing rain and snow were all possible options. Near the end of his rambling forecast, he finally stopped speaking for a moment and said, just be prepared for the unexpected. And, and when he said that, I laughed. That isn't much of a newscast to go by. Be prepared for the unexpected? That's impossible. By definition, the unexpected is unexpected. But my second thought was, haven't we been doing that since March? Haven't we been trying to prepare for the unexpected since the first day of COVID-19? In some ways, this whole year has felt like an unpredictable nor'easter bearing down on us. We've tried to be prepared for the unexpected in ways we could not imagine. We've been building the plane as we fly it all year. As we know in retrospect, that storm did not turn out to be half as bad as we anticipated. It was one of the calmest nor'easters we've had in the last 10 years, but we didn't know it would turn out like that at the time. Today, on the third Sunday of Advent, we see the pink candle being lit on the Advent wreath. And we know that the pink candle symbolizes a kinder, more gentle day. Today is Gaudate Sunday, the Sunday in Advent, when we're invited to joyously anticipate Jesus's arrival. We've already been waiting for three weeks and there are only 12 more days to go. Gaudate is the Latin word for rejoice, and that is what we're invited to do today. So how do we rejoice in the midst of a surging pandemic? I want to suggest three ways to deepen our rejoicing today. Perhaps we start by recognizing that the one who we are waiting for is the one who is always truly unexpected and always longed for year after year. He is unexpected because none of us can sum up his magnificence, his mercy, or his love. However wonderful we expect him to be, he will be more wonderful than that. God is always bigger than the boxes we put God into. The one who is truly unexpected is Jesus Christ the child who is 100% human and 100% divine. The one who comes to be among us as one of us, but who also comes to save and transform. Save and transform us and save and transform the world. Our first step towards real rejoicing this year lies in recognizing the mystery and the magnificence of God and being open to welcome him, welcoming him into our hearts again this year. How might we prepare for him, this profoundly unexpected and best gift of Christmas? I think this year, the second step towards real rejoicing requires us to lean into the shadows of this holiday. We need to recognize that this Christmas will be different for many of us, not the same number of people under the tree or around the Christmas table, not the same ability to find the perfect gift or throw the extravagant party. We don't get to sing in groups this year or 
hug our friends or family members or neighbors. We can only hug the family members who live with us. Our celebrations will be more intimate or even perhaps downright lonely for some of us this year. Accepting how different it will be makes some room for what will be waiting for us. And the third step in authentic rejoicing during a pandemic may lie in recognizing that joy itself is more flexible, more robust, more eager to join us than we may think. In our modern consumer culture, many of us have gotten the idea that joy only arrives when everything is perfect, a kind of final prize for doing everything right. Joy isn't a prize we get for being perfect. Joy isn't a luxury meant only for some nor is it a fleeting experience like the sighting of an exotic butterfly. Joy is substantial, plentiful, eager to be found. Joy is waiting for us even now, even if it's coming in unexpected ways this year for these last 12 days and for Christmas Day itself. Joy wants to accompany us on our journey to Christmas, even to this particular Christmas, and we can make room for joy. We can choose to make room for joy. Archbishop Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama catalog different kinds of joy to help us see and appreciate how joy is waiting for us in their book aptly titled The Book of Joy. Their list helps us remember that joy has many faces. Here are ways to engage joy this Christmas. First, do something that brings you pleasure. Take a walk, dance in your kitchen, drink a fantastic cup of hot chocolate or a tart, tangy cup of excellent coffee. Let out a chuckle or a belly laugh or a giggle. Amusement is a kind of joy. Claim a contentment. Bake or paint, read a book or start a fire in your fireplace and appreciate a quiet joy. Wonder over something that astonishes you. The night sky, the grace of God, the gift of being alive. Exalt after you've accomplished a difficult task. Rejoice in something hard won. Experience a radiant pride in your children and their talents. Choose to be elevated after witnessing someone else's kindness or compassion or generosity. Recognize the gratitude you feel for a kindness done to you. Rejoice in someone else's happiness or perhaps simply rejoice in the freedom to gather for worship in our beloved but weary democracy in a deeply challenging year. I hope joy finds you over and over in the next 12 days. Ordinary joy, wonder, gratitude, contentment, whatever kind of joy is waiting for you. We cannot let challenging circumstances rob us of our joy. What is sure and certain is that God is coming. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. So light the pink candle, light the purple candles, light every candle in your home and know that the light of the world is coming. Amen. Thank you, Margaret. Adrian, Sarah, will you affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed? We We believe believe in in one God, God, the Father, the the Almighty. Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Aderna family will lead us in the prayers of the people. After each bidding, I will say, Lord, in your mercy. Please respond, hear our prayer. Come, Lord God, give strength to the hands that are tired and to the knees that tremble with weakness. You are the God who cares for all who are down. You come down to where we are to uplift us. You are the God who gives us hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, may your church travel the road of holiness. May we grow in faith, grow in love, and grow in number. We pray for the church to which we belong. May the good news be preached to the poor. May the gospel be proclaimed in all places. Lord, we need your help and your strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We remember before you the discouraged and fearful, all whose freedom is limited by tyranny, all whose lives are restricted by poverty, all who are abused by those in power, all whose dreams are destroyed by mockery. You are the God who gives us hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the time when the lame will leap for you, when the deaf will hear, when the blind will be able to see, when the dumb will shout your praise, when the handicapped will find freedom, when all sorrow and grief are done away, and all will sing and shout for joy. We remember all who long for this time. We pray for friends and loved ones in sickness. We remember those who are terminally ill. You are the God who gives us hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. You are the Lord and giver of life. You have life which is eternal. We give you thanks for the saints in glory. We remember before you all who have served this community in the past. We remember loved ones departed this life. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. On the St. Michael's prayer list, we pray for Diane Benjamin, Joan Burke, Pat Capadonna, Phyllis Cass, Alfred Chapin, Annette Hamlet, Nana Hicks, Christina Leone, Margaret and Fred May, the McCaffrey family, Brian McCune, Alan Novak, Mary Jo Pinter, Ellie Randall, Pat Ross, Norma Seaver, DJ Stearns, Eleanor Vanderhagen, John, Bob, and Sean. And I'm going to read a portion of the St. Andrew's Parish prayer list. The full list can be found in the e epistle. Meredith, Mark Bacour, David Sears, James, Emily, Lindsay, Jim Weigel, John and Laura, Carolyn Fry, Catherine, Cara Gavin, Tracy and Jean Messino, Emma Barry, Bobby Murray, Richard Worry, Summer Engels, Barbara, Doug, Dee Dee Alexander, Donna Lee. And we pray for the repose of the soul of Hubert Sadowski, the father of parishioner Rita Sadowski, who died this last week. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll finish the prayers by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done, on earth <coughs> as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and the glory, glory forever and ever. Amen.
Let us confess our sins using the form found on page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us share signs of Christ's peace in whatever way we can this morning. Peace. And now we come to our time of announcements. Adrian and Sarah, will you start us off? Do you want to go first? Or? Yeah, go first. Okay. So first of all, I'd like to um, remember in our memorial remembrance flowers today, Croydon P. Cronk, um, who we're asked to remember by Carol C. Cole and Casper Cronk. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. prayer. Um, then moving on to uh, my other announcements, I want to mention that um, this week in the Wellesley Townsman newspaper, there is an article about St. Andrews and how we have navigated the, uh, the coronavirus pandemic. So uh, do take a look at that. I want to mention that um, in the next week or so, you're going to be receiving every household, both St. Andrews and St. Michael's are going to receive a copy of the Christmas Eve bulletin for our service that evening. I want to make it clear that, that there's going to be a children's service, which will be posted at three o'clock and then available to be watched at any time on Christmas Eve. And then at five o'clock, our more traditional formal service is going to be posted and you can watch it all evening. And that is going to take the place of both the five and the 10 p.m. services. And you'll be able to follow the service in this beautiful booklet, including all the words of the hymns which you'll be able to sing along. Um, and then lastly, to just to invite you along to, to coffee hour after the service. All right, and, and thank you, Kate, for putting that together. Was yeah. it Kate who did that? It's absolutely yeah. amazing. So. Um, I have two announcements. First of all, again, a big thank you to the Super 7 who put together the very successful ho Holiday Bazaar last uh, weekend and it, or over the last month. That It was just fantastic. Thank you so very much. And then my other announcement is I will be going on sabbatical in the new year and I um, leave you in the capable hands of all these people. Uh, so uh, you're in good hands while I am gone. Um, and so you can find out more about that sabbatical uh, by reading your email. Congregation, I have three announcements this morning. Um, the first is that our last nine o'clock Christian learning series uh, happens next Sunday. We're looking at Jesus's uh, human father, Joseph, and the lessons that he can teach us. Um, and I invite you to come and learn about Joseph next Sunday at nine o'clock. Um, we also have a service this coming Wednesday, December 16th, our Blue Christmas service. That will be on Zoom from 7 to 7.45. And as the name implies, it's a service that's um, especially designed to support people who've experienced loss or disappointment in this past year, um, a hard year for many, a even harder year for, for more. Um, so please join us um, and read about the service in the bulletin and the um, epistle. It's Wednesday, 7 to 7.45, bring a candle with you to the Zoom meeting if you'd like to light a candle to remember a past event or to have hope for the new year. Um, and finally, um, if you'd like to pick up your St. Andrew's Strong bracelets but haven't had a chance to do that yet, there's now a bin outside of 79 Denton Road holding large, medium, and small bracelets. Please get one at your leisure and join us in staying St. Andrew's Strong, St. Michael's Strong too. I have two announcements. One is that today is the last day to get your Christmas greeting in. We're going to be um, sprinkling some Christmas greetings into our Christmas Eve service. So we'd love a little short clip of your family in front of your Christmas tree and your Christmas breast waving hello and saying Merry Christmas um, to all of us. The instructions for sending that in are in the epistle. Please get that in today. 
lastly, um, we have our youth group alumni celebration Zoom night on uh, next Sunday, December 20th. If you're high school age or college age, come and decorate cookies and hear about what comes next and uh, catch up with all the people you love. So see you there. Thank you all. And Margaret, will you um, lead us out with the general Thanksgiving? Please join me in reciting our general Thanksgiving. It's found on page 101 in our Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for the immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all the ages. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn 59. Hark, a thrilling voice is sounding. final blessing. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God, lover, beloved, and love overflowing be among you, those you love, and those for whom you pray, this day and always. Amen. Adrian, Sarah, will you dismiss us? Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everyone. Come Bye, everyone. Come to Coffee Hour right after this. Bye. Bye. Coffee Bye. Hour on Zoom. See you soon. Bye. Bye.